The last part of the proof of the Heinebo rail theorem is the proof that every closed and bounded set is a compact set. So to show that we need to show that for every given open cover of S there is a finite subcollection that is a subcover of I of S. Okay. So let F be an open cover of the set S. Okay, so we're going to prove the fact. So for every element X of the set of real numbers, we construct a set S X by taking the intersection of the set S and the interval minus infinity X. And then we're going to define a set B as a set of all possible X's so that S X is covered by a finite subcover of F. First step. Why B is not an empty set? Okay. To show that we need to show that there is at least one element that belongs to B. So for example, uh, let's take say A U B the infinimum of S. So since S is closed and bounded we can show that its infimum and its supremum are elements of S. Okay, so it's a fairly simple exercise. So therefore if you take the set S A, which is obtained by again by taking the intersection of S and that interval minus infinity in A. And since A it will be the the smallest element of S, the intersection will consist of just one element, the element A. And of course A will be covered by some set from the collection F. So clearly A belongs to that set B. So B is not empty set. Okay. Now for the set B we have two possibilities. Okay, so if B is not bounded above, okay, then what will happen? It will happen that there is no upper bound. So in this case, since S is a bounded set, we can find at least one element, say element B from B, such that every element of S actually is less than B. Okay. So in this case if you consider the set SP which is by definition is the phone intersection then this intersection actually is, is the set S itself. So since P belongs to B right, and SP is S then by definition the set B S will be covered by a finite sub subcover of F. So in this case, S is covered by a finite subcover of F. So suppose that B is bounded above. Okay. So therefore, we can we have an upper bound and we have the least upper bound. Okay, so let M B will be the supremum of B. So we're going to show that 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 element B belongs to S and simultaneously it doesn't belong to S. So these both lead to contradictions. Okay. So if M belongs to S, M is an element of S. Okay. So we're going to do we, since F is a cover of S, we can find at least one open set F naught from the, that cover, so that M is an element 
of f naught. Okay. Now the next step actually is that since f is an open set, we can find a, an interval supposed to be a closed interval for convenience that will be a subset of f naught, so that x1 is less than m less than x2. Okay, we can always do that. Now, what we have since x1 is less than m and m is the least upper bound, we can find some elements, say y1 from b, that will be in between x1 and m. Okay? And in this case, the set S y1 is covered by some collection of sets from the from the open cover F. Okay? And then also we can see that Sx1 is a subset of Sy1. So therefore Sx1 is again is covered by the same subcollection. Okay. So let me illustrate the situation by the following picture. So if you consider that part of S that is less than x1, then that part of S is covered by the set f1, f2, so on, fk. And now f0 was selected so that it covers the whole interval x1, x2. So that interval is covered by f0. So now the extended collection f not f1 so on fk covers covers that part of s that this was an x2 so that powers this intersection which we denoted by sx2 so what does it mean it means that for this set sx2 we found again a finite subcover Therefore, by definition, x2 belongs to b. But x2 was selected so that it's larger than m, and m was the supreme of, of b. So therefore, we have contradiction. So th it contradicts to the fact that m is the supremum of B okay, and M is less than X2 but X2 belongs to B okay. so now we're going to consider the, the next case the case then B, M is not an element of S okay. so suppose that M is not an element of S Okay, so in this case, since S is a closed set, so therefore, is if M doesn't belong to S, then we can find some delta so that the interval, okay, say M minus delta, M plus delta, intersection S is empty. Okay, so just convenience, I'll take an interval open from the left side and close from the right hand side. Okay, and then we can observe that actually the two sets S M minus delta and S M plus delta, so constructed for these two points, they are actually the same. Why it's so? Because if you take the interval S M plus delta, so it's by definition the section of the set S with the interval minus infinity M plus delta we can represent this intersection as a union of two parts. Okay, so there will be union 
S intersection interval minus infinity M minus delta and S intersection interval M minus delta M plus delta. Okay? So that the first part that you be the set S minus delta and then that part gives us an empty set. Okay, so therefore it's cool. It's S M minus delta. Okay? So therefore what we have we have that M again is this remember that M was defined as the supremum of B. So therefore M minus delta belongs to B. Okay? Since it's less than M. So therefore if since again these two sets are the same we may conclude then element M plus delta again belongs to B. Okay? But that again contradicts that M is a supremum of B. So therefore either way if B is bounded above we get a contradiction. Okay? So we conclude that this supposition was uh, not true so we conclude that B is not bounded above. So therefore B is not bounded above. Okay, since we got a contradiction in other case whether M belongs to S or M doesn't belong to S. So therefore the set S must be compact. Okay, and this concludes the proof.